Hi, well in this film I'm going to be making the seat for the Glasgow share. And I've made up a couple of templates to help with the seat. So I just make them out of plywood. And then I take my measurements off those. It makes it all a lot easier. But this one I wanted, to sort of, I've used this template before actually on a side chair and it's got a nice little back piece. So I'm going to use that template with that back piece. I'll take you through what, how I do it. Well, I've just been drawing around my template to get a seat shape and I've got a lovely bit of English elm here and it's got wonderful graining. I think the knots will be a little bit troublesome when I come to hollow out the seat but it will add real character to the chair and um, this elm it's very hard to get hold of nowadays because this is 20 years old it's been well seasoned and because of Dutch elm disease we've actually got very little elm around in the UK so it's great to have a nice piece. I want to treat it with great reverence <laughs> as I work on it and make a nice chair seat. But I think for the Glasgow chair, this will be very nice material indeed. Many years ago, I was given this rather nice old Marple's bow saw. I've got the rough shape of the seat blank sawn out now. And I'm just going to give a little bit of smoothing on these sides just to define them a bit more and then what I need to do is start just sort of mapping in roughly where the spindles will be going and what parts of the seat to hollow out. I'm just tidying up the edge a little bit at the moment so um, just really so I've got a sort of defined line to work from it just makes it easier all round. I'm using my nice big paddle spoke shave could use a draw knife for this spoke shave is a little bit more accurate. The grain on the elm goes all over the place. I mean, that's partly what makes it so strong. But, um, it's lovely wood. It smells really nice as you work with it as well. A sort of boundary really, just for where the spindles are gonna go. So I'll do that each side. It doesn't have to be precise, but it's essentially, it's a no-go zone for the hollowing out. Like something like that. So the spindles will go around there. There'll be a couple of back spindles coming up the back here. And then the other area I sort of want to semi-protect is what I call a pommel. So it's the raised bit for the seat here. So I mean in broad terms, it's something like that. Again, don't have to be rigid about this. But I don't want to go to deep fair. So I'll take out that material there and there. Again, I'll even this up later, but it gives a, a good idea of what's coming out and what's not coming out. Well, some of the heavy work can be done with this big adze. And I've got a board I've knocked up for this one. So it really just is a way of holding the seat there nice and securely without it <laughs> being too dangerous an operation for your feet. So um, it's quite good. And I just do a bit of chipping at this. <laughs> you realize how tough Elm is when you start to attack it. Obviously in the olden days, when lots of these seats would have been adzed out, it would have been done while the wood was green. And there's a big difference between adding out green elm and elm that's about 20 years old. But there you are. I 20 years seasoned, I mean. I think uh, now will be quite a good time to start using a smaller hand as. I mean, I've done a, a good bit of roughing out here and got rid of some of the really heavy stuff. This wood is incredibly tough. <laughs> Still, it's getting there. There's a lot more control with the small one. You're taking smaller sweeps and you're able to clean up some of the sort of gouges left by the large adze. And you can get closer into the edges because there's less risk of damaging your chair seat. I don't want to hit that area. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is also an opportunity to have another little go with the ads I made in an earlier film. This is when I took a slate um, layers hammer and I converted it into an ads. So that's on the channel if you want to have a look at it, forging up this one. I must say I really like this little ads. It's a nice little size for this sort of thing actually. It does a reasonable job and um, it's not quite so killing to use but it's lovely and sharp. Even around this knot area. Next tool in my armoury is a scorp. So barrel makers or chair makers scorp. Once the scorp's been over, one does begin to get a nice smoother chair-like surface. You begin to think, yes, this is gonna work. Next tool I'll be using will be one of my homemade travishers. And again, I've made these on an earlier film. The trick with the travishers is to use them across the grain. they give quite a quick win actually you get quite a nice smoother surface quite quickly I'll try the slightly gentler curved one it's getting there it's coming quite a nice smoother surface still a fair bit to go I'm now on to my chair pull shave tool and this again is one I've put a film up on that's made by Veritas it's quite a nice pull shave it's quite effective it's, um, again very nicely made these Veritas tools are and that's the pull shave well, to me, the test of a nice seat is, does it feel good? So one we're doing that. <laughs> and yes, that does feel very nice. I feel it's quite supportive. So there you are. A bit more finishing work to do there. But that is the seat roughed out. Well, I've just drawn up a new seat template. I decided actually rather than work, try and work off two templates, it'd be easier to have one. So I've actually worked out my seat angles I'm going to be using and my spindle placements. So here it is. And the other thing I've done is I've just roughed out of an old bit of wood, the sort of actual main seat area, not the back comb, but the seat area. And I'm going to do a practice drilling just to see if I've got these angles working nicely on the floor. So I always quite like to do this. I sort of look out in skips for bits of wood which are suitable for seats and for trialing things. And this is absolutely fine. It's just a bit of a block board stuff, but it would be enough for me just to check my legs. So I'll drill that next and then check it's going okay. Just a tool which I find very useful actually for setting angles is this tool here. It's called an angle divisor and you can actually set it for different angles so it's got a little graduated scale here and you can set different angles so yeah, if for example I set it at 90 you can see straight up if you're trying to measure the inside of a chair leg and you see the leg slope a bit like that and you try it against a chair perhaps that's the slope you can then read it off and say oh yeah that's um, 78 or whatever it is but it's quite a useful little tool. No batteries needed, <laughs> so it doesn't go wrong, doesn't run out of power. And I quite like it. I use it quite a lot for setting chair leg angles. So you can just look, it just slides like that. And you read your figures off on the scale. So simple, but quite effective. Well, I'm just setting my bevel box at zero degrees. So I use one of these to measure angles. I've got it on my level at the moment, but that it picks up differences in angle quite a useful little tool actually so I'll pop that on my drill press and make sure then I've got the right drilling angles
this is my drilling setup, so it's just a board that I clamp to the back of my drill press column and it's on a hinge and it basically means I can set this at any angle for drilling and I used a little Gemred digital box to actually get the right angle. So I want 20 degrees for my back legs. What I then do is I line up my sight lines with the line on the board here, on the central board. Make sure I've got that in the right position. It's all a bit approximate, but it does help get it broadly right. Switch on and drill away. That's the holes for my back legs, hopefully both at the same sort of angle. I've now done a sort of mock-up with the seat just to make sure that I've got the leg angles about right and also make sure I've got the spindles about right. And I think actually that's working out quite well, so I'm fairly pleased with that all in all. So <laughs> I'll try and position the comb and you can see what I mean. Oops, a bit cramped on space here. but. There we are. I mean, these spindles need a little bit of playing around and the comb will probably need a bit of playing around, but that's the sort of idea. So I'm quite pleased to have done that mock-up just to know that I'm not going to waste a nice bit of elm and all the work I've put into it already. Well, this is my pattern board, so all my sight lines are drawn on there. So if I want to replicate this chair later on, I can. So I've now translated my drilling angles onto the underside there for the legs and onto the upper surface here for the spindles. Well, I'm now just drilling the front legs, so from the underside of the seat board, and I'm just checking my angles very carefully. So I've got the back legs and the spindles drilled, and I'm just doing the front bits. That's right, yep, yeah. just double double checking. <laughs> I do not want to get this wrong. This elm is so tough. <laughs> Alright, that's that one. That's good. That drilling seems to have gone okay. I am actually looking at this and slightly wondering if I want to have a sort of central splat rather than those two spindles in the centre. Whether for strength I need the central splat because these spindles are quite long. I'm going to have a little think on that one. We'll see. Anyway, I am quite pleased with that. Seat making is always a bit nerve wracking, so to get that broadly right is great. Didn't want to ruin that nice bit of elm, but I know I'm quite happy with that. I know I need to do more work on the seat, but um, that's easily done, so I can clean that up. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed watching that part of the seat making. So there'll be a bit of, of assembly coming up next. Anyway, thanks for watching.